I just got this Ouster Motor electric bike built up and charged, so it's time to go see how much joy it really brings. It is just about dark, but luckily it has a light, so I'll see how that does, and hopefully still have a fun ride. Okay, the light is not very good, but I brought it back up. First, let's see how fast this thing goes. 29. This looks like a nice berm here. Oh yeah, ripping. Just stopped by Hannah's work where she's on another e-bike and we're cruising over to a park now on a nice paved path at the moment. We got some lights and a concrete block to try to trials over. Oh, the bar's moved. Take two. Oh yeah. Sweet. Found another trials challenge. This one is skinny in the sand. Not a good start. Okay, a little jerky there. Try to get some hops around this corner. Oh no. Okay, stay nice and straight. Get some hops around the corner. Oh, the rear hops are tough. There we go, throttle it out. Had to work for that one. Wow. Okay, here's a real steep hill. Let's see how much power this thing's really got. Oh, we're going. Gotta work for it quite a bit at the top here, but I'm up. Now let's see how well those brakes work. Coming down the hill with some speed, and there we go. Pretty weak. Just for fun, see how this thing floats around. Whoa! Okay. I was not expecting the power to stay going quite that long and it went that long again. I have to stop pedaling way earlier and then I have no power to turn it around though. Let's try to use the throttle this time. There we go. And now Hannah's riding it. She's going to try out some of these hills. It should be pretty fun. Nice big rolling grass hills. Really let the e-bike power get you up them and then you can cruise on down as fast as you want. Use that momentum to carry up the next one and the electric power. Oh my god, that is so squirrely. Squirrely? This is squirrely. Which part? This the power. It's a little jerky. Gotta get used to it. It's like, Ugh. you sure about that? Yeah. All right, we are out in the woods on the Ouster motor. Hannah's riding it now. We're gonna do a loop on our mountain bike trail. Oh. We actually did this yesterday, but it had some issues, so we're redoing it. But we'll just take that as practice. What mode are you on now? I'm on level two. How's it feeling? Better than level five than from yesterday. You can really see and hear that fender flopping around. Chain flops around a bit on the bumpier sections. Oh, can be a lot to handle in the tighter sections. Yeah, I have to use the throttle a little bit for the turns to make it a little bit more smooth. Level five now, going up the hill. First loose downhill, how the brakes work? Sure, okay. Just okay. <laughs> the throttle's kind of where it's at right now. Try to just pedal through here and see how that goes. Oh. But yesterday I ran into a tree with it. So let's see if you learned anything. Oh, one minute. I gotta turn this down. Level two right now. Oh, I tricky just corner, huh? Ran into a tree. I don't think I, ah! And this is so, the power is either like, wanna go super fast. Like the minute you start pedaling, it just goes super fast. But if I use the throttle, it's smooth up. Oh, the bike does stop power. So it's done this a few times where you're cruising along and then it just stops going. And you have to pedal on your own for a minute. Yeah, see now then... it just picked up again. Woo! There's some air. <laughs> oh, a little Bouncing rough. Bouncing right over the logs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Looking smooth. Oh yeah. All right, bump it up to five for the hill climb. <laughs> All right, that was better than yesterday. <laughs> Didn't hit any trees. 
almost hit some trees, but I'll take it. I, I found that level three worked the best. Level five, good for hill climbs. Level one and two, definitely better for the tight turns, but still so inconsistent. And I feel like still I'm gonna hit trees. <laughs> I'm gonna start on level one here and then bump it up as the trail goes by. Level one should bring me just over 10 miles an hour. Should be enough for these jumps. Oh. Quite a bit of flopping around going on back there. Bump it up to level two now. See what kind of speed I can get up this hill. Looking like 11, 12. Let's go to level three. I'm gonna hit this drop. Oh, a little extra boost. Oh man. It is not the smoothest thing to jump, that is for sure. See how it does through these tight sections here. Oh, yeah, that power is tricky to control. It's a good thing you can just grab the brake if you need to cut the power quick. See how it does on this skinny here. Oh, I think I almost took the skinny down with how hard I hit that. A couple jumps. See if I can get a little whip going. Oh, look at that. So much style, I bet. Bumping it up to four now. And another extra line. Oh, a little extra wheelie off the top. If you knew that extra power was coming, it'd probably be pretty nice. But for me right now, it's kind of hard to know what it's gonna give me. Through the rocks. Oh, nice and bumpy. Giant tire, let's see what happens here. Oh, pretty good that time. And into level five now. Another skinny. Oh, oh that, that was, was rough. Catchy. Big one-hander air. Up the hill, no problem. Let's throw this skinny in the mix too. And that's a lap. Bike is pretty bouncy. Could have used a little less air in the tires. Set up more for the road right now, but it survived a lap on our mountain bike trail. So says something, right? <laughs> One question though, did it bring you joy? It brought me so much joy. All you need is some power for some joy. Overall, the S07 feels like it is at home as a commuter bike and it can handle a little bit of off-road riding, but I don't know how well it would hold up over time, so I wouldn't recommend it for rough mountain bike trails. It is the cheapest e-bike that I've tried, and that is noticeable with some of the components like the plastic fenders that flop around a lot, the lack of a rear tail light, and the motor doesn't seem to be quite as smooth. It also had problems shutting off. And there were a couple weird things on the build, which I'll show now. I'm putting the bike together and I found a missing screw. You can see there's one there, but at the bottom here, it's missing there. So there's a bit of wobble going on. I'll have to find a replacement for that. It also came with this in the box. Unfortunately, it was already eaten. None left for me, but kind of an interesting piece of garbage included with the bike. I have to remove this whole piece to get this tight down here. And I'm noticing that one screw, that one there, is unlike the others. That one looks like it's more for wood or plastic, where this is more of a normal thread for a bicycle. So that's a bit concerning to me. You can see the threads are damaged as well from that screw. It is definitely not supposed to be there. And then a little bit of rubbing there from the loose screw at the bottom. These were all not very tight either. But it did feel slightly lighter than the other bikes, which made me want to bunny hop and jump it a little more. The forks worked better as well, so it made it easier to get the front wheel off the ground, but that rear end is still really heavy, so you had to work for it. If you were interested in buying one of these bikes, check out the link in the description below and use the code to save some money.